healthy. In this video, we're going to discuss Kikuchi diffraction in TEM. Some of you may have experience with SEM, scanning electron microscopy. If the SEM is equipped with an EBSD detector, EBSD stands for electron backscatter diffraction, you can acquire colorful maps like the example shown on the left in this slide. The color in the EBSD maps can tell you the crystal orientation. When the acquisition is happening, when you pay attention to the EBSD detector, you can see all these line-like features on the detector. The locations of these lines will depend on the exact crystal orientation. The lines are called Kikuchi lines. They are caused by Kikuchi diffraction. When using TEM, in the right conditions, you can also see Kikuchi lines. The main difference here compared to the EBSD case is these Kikuchi lines are superimposed with the diffraction spots. We have spent a lot of effort learning diffraction spots. In this video, we'll focus on the lines or bands we can see from the Kikuchi diffraction. The first question we try to address is how does Kikuchi diffraction happen? To undergo Kikuchi diffraction, the electrons from the incident beam has to be scattered twice. These electrons first will undergo inelastic or incoherent scattering. Starting from this point, these electrons will follow a random walk. After that, these electrons will then subsequently undergo Bragg diffraction. For the same set of lattice planes for Bragg diffraction, the electrons can be scattered by the front face of the lattice planes as well as the back face of the lattice planes. This will give you two Kikuchi lines for each set of planes. One of them will have higher intensity, which is called the axis line. The other will have lower intensity called the defect line. You will see an example in the next slide. You can see here, in order to have Kikuchi diffraction, you need to have the electrons to be diffracted twice. To do that, the specimen has to be fairly thick, usually more than one mean free path in thickness. What we have illustrated here in step two is a 2D projection. In reality, everything is in 3D. Due to the inelastic scattering nature from the first step, now the electron beam are coming from all different directions for the Bragg diffraction. Electrons coming from different directions, as long as the incoming angle is theta b, the Bragg angle, it will then strongly diffract. Therefore, in 3D, we are forming something called Cossack Holmes. The intersection of the Cossack Holmes with the viewing screen produces the Kikuchi lines. In regular diffraction, because the incident electron beam has only one direction, we see spots. In Kikuchi diffraction, due to the first step inelastic scattering, the incident electron beam now comes in all different directions, which gives rise to the lines. The example on the left is from the GEO website. You can see both diffraction spots and the Kikuchi lines. Let's look at one pair of Kikuchi lines. The one shown here is Kikuchi line axis, it's bright. The one on the left is Kikuchi line defect, it's darker. These two Kikuchi lines makes one Kikuchi band. One interesting thing to notice is for the Kikuchi band, the line that is closer to the direct beam is always dark. The one that is further away from the direct beam is always bright. After understanding what causes Kikuchi diffraction, let's look at how we can use Kikuchi lines. The first thing is Kikuchi lines can help us with tilting. In the example shown here, we have the direct beam and the diffracted beam. This is a classical two beam condition with one G excited. Looking at the tilting condition in the middle, we have the direct beam here. One G is pretty dim, but two G is bright. So this is a two beam condition with two G excited. In the example on the right, we have the direct beam, then one G is dim, two G is dim, 3G is bright. This is a two-beam condition with 3G excited. You will appreciate why this is important when we discuss the weak beam dark field imaging. The second use of Kikuchi lines in TEM is we can use it as a road map. In many cases, for example, if we are interested in taking the high-res TEM images, we want to tilt the crystal to a low index zone axis. Following the Kikuchi bands, where they converge together, that's usually where the low index zone axes are. The third use of Kikuchi lines is you can use that to tell you the exact crystal orientation of your specimen in TEM. 
the principle is the same as that in EBSD. I will not elaborate it here. So far in the diffraction part, we have covered diffraction spots, diffraction lines. In the next video, we'll discuss diffraction disks.